Here we go. All right, let's give this a shot. Okay. This is, do you hear that? Okay, this I is going to work. I'm telling you right now. All right. Ooh. I think we have our winner. Yes, let's try to, to let's go to the phone line. Hello. Yeah, hey, this is uh, Mike Richards from <laughs> rawmikerichards.com. Hey, Connor, how are you doing today? <laughs> Did I win the uh, free tickets? No. In fact, you won fuck all, but I'll tell you what, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing buddy how you doing today i'm good i'm good boys how we doing okay well uh, just uh, momentarily here so are we going to play mark's uh call here of, yeah uh, let's call let's uh, mark can you set this up for us yes. what exactly is it yeah. just so we can uh uh present okay, so, it properly all right so i won the pga tour call of the week and i thought this would be appropriate for you guys because i know you like to you know gamble a little bit here or there and i know you like to marry your gambling yes. with sport uh johnny vegas uh won the canadian open yesterday back to back as you uh, gentlemen both know uh and this is his putt to get to 21 under par i think the rest will speak for itself here we go 12 feet directly underneath the hole this to get to 21 under par putter back Ball goes up the rise, tries to stretch, and down! Blackjack, Johnny Vegas, 21 under par. Hey, how about that? Oh, I like that. Okay, Z, Z, when you're thinking <laughs> when you're thinking the potential of it going to 21, did you have in the back of your mind, I'm calling Blackjack yeah. here if he drops this? Yeah, so what happened was, you know, I was just waiting to drop Vegas, baby, all day. Oh, yeah. I'm just waiting to drop <laughs> Vegas, baby. <laughs> And, and I'm walking to the 13th green, and it just dawns on me that you know if he makes birdie here, he's you know that's he's going to 21. And like when I go to when I go to a casino, 80 percent of the time, 75 percent of the time, I'm playing blackjack, and the other percent, I'm usually on the craps table, cursing the fact that I was stupid enough to go to the craps table. So, yeah. Uh, so it, that's how it got. I go okay if if he makes it, and it was not a gimme. It was like nine feet. I go, but if he makes it. You know, I'm I'm gonna go with that and see how it plays. So I had it prepped. I had it prepped about two minutes before the putt dropped. So but I went, oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> oh, it sounded fantastic. <laughs> well it, done. And of course, it's PGA Radio, so you can't drop the you know. Well, suck me sideways. There's a. <laughs> no, I, I can't. <laughs> that was I the runner can't drop. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't drop other Vegas uh, oh, yeah. amenities into the call, like crack and prostitutes and things of that nature. Uh, they don't go so well on PGA Tour radio. So no, Johnny Vegas. So and I was just talking about you know the kinds of players that we get for our national open, and it hasn't been the easiest. And, and a lot of times it's about scheduling when and where players want to dedicate their time. Each and every year, I, I imagine that they sit down and sort of take a look at what's happening. And when you come right after the open. Is that the difficulty that 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 doesn't matter where it is in Canada? I mean, sometimes it's on the West Coast. I mean, you know, it, 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 Glen Abbey at this point. But if it, you know, like the ones out in BC, does it become a scheduling issue as, as to you know what the field is going to look like? Or oh, huge, huge, Michael. That's what it is because you know the golf course is friendly. Uh, some guys really like it. Some guys are indifferent to it. No one dislikes it anymore. So the golf course is fine. The purse is solid. Uh, you know, it's an easy travel to wherever they're going next, obviously out of Toronto most of the time. But being behind the, the Open Championship is brutal. Now, I do know this from being around there this week. The days of the Canadian Open moving around the country more than, say, once a decade are done. Mm. Uh, uh, the, new, yeah, the new CEO of Golf Canada, Lawrence Applebaum, and the people at Golf Canada – have just come, unfortunately, it's bad. It's not a good realization, but the fiscal realization of this tournament is when it's not in the GTA, you've got two major problems. When it's not in the GTA, you could lose a boatload of dough. Sometimes you don't, but you are certainly rolling the dice, and they do not have the kind of you know, money behind them or they, you know, don't want to dis dis uh, dis disappoint RBC as well. So you've got to keep it in the GTA. And the other factor is the further west you move, yeah. the, the worse the field gets. Because now you're going from, you know, England, Scotland, et cetera, and you're going not just to Toronto, you're going another five hours to Vancouver. Yeah, almost, so, around, almost around the world, Mark, really, when you think about it. 
Yeah. yeah. So I don't think, with the exception of maybe once a decade, guys, I don't think you're going to see it leave. The furthest west you're going to see it is Hamilton, and it's going to be in the GTA. Interesting. You know what name really popped up to me and I, I was kind of excited about not only because of Mike's fantastic impression, but uh, but how old the dude is. VJ Singh. VJ Singh came to play this week here in Toronto, didn't he? Not a bad decision either, guys, because, you know, he should have been in Wales for the senior British Open and where it was like minus four and they were all trying to beat Bernard Longer in minus four degree <laughs> weather. Right. And DJ's like, I'll take a pass on that, and I'll play in 25 degrees and sunny. And boy, you know, he walks away with a big paycheck, plays great, doesn't travel to the other side of the world. It's different if he was 24 years old, you know, or 34 and in his prime. But at 54, you know what? What a great call for VJ. It's been a long time. He, he, the last time he won on the PGA Tour was 2008, but who cares? This is all, this is all bonus ATM cash cow money yep. for VJ Singh. So... A bit of a surprise. I don't think anybody saw it coming, but uh, really solid play. We're in conversation with Mark Sacchino from Golf Talk Canada here on rawmikerichards.com. And by the way, you know, for those that are, uh, are, are asking these questions, tweeting it in, sometimes the nickname for VJ is ATM, as in as in the, the cash machine, not as in the ATM, what some of you people are saying. <laughs> Cost extra. No, that, that, that you might see on, <laughs> on Red Tube. That's not what that is. It's come on, people. Let's keep it. Come on. It's a family show. Yeah. Real family show on this one. Uh, you know, uh, so you're taking a look at Jordan Spieth, and it's funny when uh, we get into this conversation about likability. And it's it's there's a strangeness about it because, you know, as our, our technical producer, uh, Russell Roast Beef Graham, I said, well, who who doesn't like, why are people mad about Jordan Spieth or why don't they like him? And then, and Russell's like, well, I don't like him. I'm like, why? Is it is it because of his family background coming from money in like Highland Park in Dallas? Is it uh, like, I, I, what is your feeling? Because I think some people should be cheering for him when it comes up to the PGA Championship. But there is an element out there that is it the fact that they want to make that there is a bad guy, like someone who wears the black hat in the PGA? Because right now, there's a lot of likable guys. I don't know if there's really a villain. So are they just trying to make that happen as him being the bad guy? Yeah, I don't think it's going to work as a bad guy. I, I understand a few traits or a few, you know, uh, things that he couldn't change, like you mentioned, like where he comes from, background, etc., that may make him unlikable to certain people. But to force him into a bad guy role, like what would be very natural, say for like an Ian Poulter or something like that. I'm, I'm for, you know, Poulter played well this week, but un, but unfortunately, he's just not good enough to for people to care over a full season and make him a true bad guy. Um, what are the traits, though? What, do, think, what traits are we talking about that makes him unlikable? You know what I think it is? You know what I think it is, Mike? I think it's his twitchiness and his slowness on the golf course. Like the 25-minute ordeal at the Open Championship. Yes. I think that is what it is. I, I think, like, don't you remember Sergio back in the day couldn't oh, pull the trigger? Yeah. And, like, the guys in New York, like, New Yorkers, to me, are, like, my favorite sports fans. There is no filter uh, from people from here, and they are just ripping into him at the U.S. Open, you know? And uh, and I think that's part of it with Jordan Spieth. I also think this. When he first came out, out on tour, and I was out there working PGA Tour Radio, he had time for everyone. Uh, he spoke to everyone, and um, he sounded very unfiltered and, and unscripted. I think in the last two years, he has gotten more scripted. I think... He uh, does not necessarily, he's not as open or available to everyone as he used to be. And part of that is on his agent, who is uh, very difficult to deal with at times. Okay. Uh, even to the, yeah, even with the, the, like the top level media officials on tour, he can be very difficult to deal with. And they've kind of, you know, put Jordan now on this shelf in this little box. So you kind of add these things up and maybe that's why. But true villain, eh, that's a tough one. That, that might be a tough one. Mark, let's quickly look ahead uh, to the uh, final major of the year. The uh, PGA Championship happened. I believe it's uh, Charlotte. I'm not. I'm trying to remember the course, but uh, what uh, what are we scoping as far as uh, favorites at that course to kind of uh, wrap up the well, getting close to wrapping up the golf season? 
Yeah, you know, this is an interesting one, guys. What a horrible year. Uh, I hate this revolving door of throw a dart at the board and find a guy that you wouldn't know if you hit with your car to walk away with a golf tournament. So um, it's at Quail Hollow, which has gone, gone under a few renovation changes. It usually hosts the Wells Fargo Open every year on the PGA Tour. This year it didn't because it had the PGA Championship and went through a few changes. So there's two favorites right now, Jordan Spieth, for obvious reasons, because of what he just did at the Open Championship. And the other favorite is Rory McIlroy, who has had an absolutely horrible year, but has multiple wins and a great career at Quail Hollow. So it falls into the horses for courses category, and this drought has to end at some point theory. So those are your favorites right now. After that, trying to find somebody you like heading into this golf tournament Boy, is it almost impossible. You know, Dustin Johnson has basically had the summer off, uh, did not play well at the Open Championship. You know, so-so. Again, this week, really a golf tournament he should have won here in Canada and, you know, really could not get it done. Jason Day is nowhere to be found. Rory, nothing but question marks. You know, Sergio just got married. I'm sure he's still celebrating his green jacket. I, I don't know. I You know, I think... If I was a betting guy, which, you know, I, I will certainly lay a few ducats for sure, I will go a long shot. I will look at somebody at 60, 70, 80 to 1 because why not? With yeah. the exception of Jordan Spieth, you know, pick a North American player that likes North American style golf, a guy that you think's got some game, who's played well throughout the summer, Daniel Berger, Charlie Hoffman, somebody like that. Take your 80 to 1 and go running to the woods with it and, Hope he's in the hunt on Sunday. Hey, before I let you go, Mark, uh, you know, looking at some of the Canadians and, and from season to season, we always hope that there's, you know, whether it was, uh, you know, Graham Dillette or, or, or you know, what, however we want to word it with some of the other players, uh, it hasn't been the, the greatest season necessarily. We talked about Mackenzie Hughes, uh, you know, in being 10 strokes back. But, I mean, of some of the names we thought that would maybe make a move, uh, what happened to the Canadians this summer, do you think? It's, it's so weird because we came out of the gates on fire. Two victories, a 59, Adam Hadwin qualifying for every major uh, for the year. So all, all this promise, and then we assume that Dillette and Hearn would be, uh, you know, something relative to what we've experienced over the last cu- couple of years with them. And, of course, let's not forget Nick Taylor, Brad Fritch, and a host of others that make appearances now and then as well. And instead, we've, we've had the complete opposite. Uh, it makes no sense to me. Uh, I'll give Mackenzie Hughes a pass because this is, we forget this is his rookie year. Right. And most, with the exception of Glen Abbey, most of these golf courses, he's seen for the first time. He's never played them before. So, you know, that comes into the equation quite a bit. Um, for Adam Adwin... I think what happened was he's gone through a lot of change. You know, it was a lot all at once, and I think he's pressing too hard. In fact, he's verbalized that to myself and to to many others that, you know, he got on a little bit of a slump, and he just tried too hard to get out of it and now finds himself in a a rut. And golf is one of those weird sports. You know, there's a couple sports out there in the world where, you, you can get in your way, and you can try too hard. And I think that's what's happening right now with Adam Hadwin. I think Adam needs to just get out of his way, maybe take some time off, uh, maybe just go back to you know two or three basic fundamentals and let things happen again because he's too good uh, for this slump to last much longer. But I think he's in his own way right now. Hey, Mark, thanks so much uh, for joining us on short notice uh, here today because uh, I know in your world travels, there's lots of things going on. You're you're a little bit like Kramer that way, I find. You have this tremendous, <laughs> you have this tremendous uh, life. I don't know. You, I mean, you're you're always in some fancy place. You're either in in Hawaii or down in South Carolina. You're getting picture taken with famous people. It's it's really quite remarkable. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Well, just you know, don't tell the wife that, and uh, <laughs> you know, the bank account's getting killed for it. So, uh, <laughs> okay. you know, but uh, just don't call me for movie phone. I don't have a crater yeah. <laughs> movie phone. So. Hey, Mark, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Always appreciate it. My friend, we'll get you in studio soon. Love it. Take care, boys. Thanks, Mark. That is uh, Mark Sacchino from Golf Talk Canada, and uh, he always does a great job. He's a good friend. And there is the magic of Skype uh, there working. All right. Become best friends. Yep.